Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Well, as we know, the ATF, which has been up to all sorts of nefarious activities the last couple of years, published in the Federal Register back on April 26th of this year a new definition for frames and receivers. Now, that went back to the drawing board based upon a lot of comments, and there's been some revisions, but as we know, Anytime a federal agency publishes something in the federal registry, it becomes effective exactly 120 days following its publication. So that means that these new definitions of frames and receivers are in effect today. So let's spend a few minutes and talk about what exactly constitutes a frame or receiver now. Okay, so the issue we're talking about today is the ATF, Department of Justice's new definitions, proposed definitions for frames and receivers. Now, that was published in the Code of Federal Regulations back on April 26th, and under federal law, that means that they become effective 120 days after publication. That is today, August 24th. So these rules are in effect today. Now, First of all, what I want to do is I want to kind of give some very specifics in a nutshell. What does the definitions mean? And then I want to show you some examples because when this terrible piece of legislation was kicking around, there was a lot of urban legends. There was a lot of conjecture and speculation that this was going to require the serialization of every component of every single firearm. And while I think the federal government and this particular ATF would love nothing more then to have things that way, that is not how this final rule shakes down. And so I want to give you some very clear examples of what constitutes frames and receivers so we all have a better understanding moving forward of what this law truly encompasses. Okay, for starters, all of these new definitions are going to be found in 27 CFR section 478.12. That is 27 CFR section 478.12. There in there is a new definition for frame and receiver and variant. So let's go through each one of those. Now, the term frame is now defined as follows. The term frame means the part of a handgun or variants thereof that provides housing or a structure for the primary energized component designed to hold back the hammer, striker, bolt, or similar component prior to initiation of the firing sequence, i.e. sear or equivalent, even if pins or other attachments are required to connect such component to the housing or structure. And notice how the term frame is really being used exclusively for handguns and pistols. Now, the term receiver has a definition, and it now is defined by federal law as... The term receiver means the part of a rifle, shotgun, or projectile weapon other than a handgun or variants thereof that provides housing or structure for the primary component designed to block or seal the breach prior to initiation of the firing sequence, i.e. bolt breech block or equivalent even if pins or other attachments are required to connect such components to the housing or structure so now we're using the term receiver when we're talking about rifles shotguns other long guns so the federal definition now uses the term frame for handguns receiver for long guns and then of course there is the term variant or variant thereof we might as well give you that definition as well that now is defined by federal law as the terms variant and variance thereof means a weapon utilizing a similar frame or receiver design irrespective of new or different model designations or configurations, characteristics, features, components, accessories, or attachments. For example, an AK-type firearm with a short stock and a pistol grip is a pistol variant of an AK-type rifle. An AR-type firearm with a short stock and a pistol grip is a pistol variant of an AR-type rifle. And a revolving cylinder shotgun is a shotgun variant of a revolver. And what they're doing is, is they're using these terms to make sure that all firearms, one way or the other, is going to be encompassed, encapsulated within this federal definition. Now, when this rulemaking was kicking around, a lot of us became gravely concerned that it was going to require the serialization of every single component of a firearm, a lower, an upper, a bolt carrier, a trigger component, an optic, whatever. 
As it turns out, the, this rulemaking does not turn out to be as restrictive as we thought. Now, I'm not supporting it, and candidly, this is, again, a total violation of the separation of powers. I think that we could take a look at the rulemaking that's going on here and take a look at what the Supreme Court ruled in West Virginia v versus EPA and wonder what's going on, but I digress. Now, this is the important part I want you to be aware of because there were there are several types of platforms of firearms that the ATF has given us diagrams to show us what exactly constitutes a frame or a receiver. And I want to go over those with you. Um, this is not going to encapsulate all platforms of firearms, but we're going to be able to cover a large majority of them by this. Okay, first let's talk about either hinged or single framed revolvers, okay? According to the ATF, this right here constitutes the frame of a single frame or hinged frame revolver. Now, when it comes to semi-automatic handguns, the ATF has given us a couple of examples. Uh, they've given us this Colt 1911 model right here, which again, as you can see, the frame is what we anticipate it to be. They have also given us a Glock example here, once again, showing us what we believe the frame to be. And they have also given us a Sig Sauer variation. And this is different because the Sig Sauer, as we know, has these fire control components that you can drop into these polymer lowers. It's really fantastic technology. So unlike the Colt and the Glock, where the entire lower uh, portion of the firearm is considered to be the frame, when it comes to these SIG models, it is the fire, it's the trigger control group right there that constitutes the serialized portion that is, needs to be registered through a 4473. So you can see for the semi-automatic handguns, depending on the configuration, certain components may or may not compromise what's considered to be the frame. Okay, now for bolt action rifles such as this one here, the ATF tells us that the receiver is the part of the rifle that provides a structure for the bolt. Uh, that makes perfectly good sense. So that now is considered the receiver of a bolt action rifle. Now, when we get to the brake action, lever action, pump action, shotguns, and rifles, ATF has provided us with this diagram here, which does show us various different things on a brake action firearm, a lever action firearm, and a pump action firearm as to what constitutes the receiver for those particular firearms. When it comes to the AK platform firearms, ATF is stating that this here constitutes the receiver, and as they describe it, the receiver is the part of the weapon that provides housing for the bolt. So that would be considered the receiver for all AK platformed firearms. Now for some of the more hard to find items, such as the Thompson machine gun and other semi-automatic versions, this is the diagram that ATF has given us, and what they're claiming here is Thompson machine guns and semi-automatic variants, and L1A1, FN, FAL, FN, FNC, MP38, and so on. The receiver is the upper part of the weapon that provides housing for the bolt. So there is really nothing that should come as a shock to anyone who is familiar with firearms, with frames and receivers, what is being defined as the frame or receiver under this current rule is it typically what we expect it to be. Now, for our AR platform firearms, the receiver is exactly what we expect it to be. It is, in fact, the lower receiver. Uh, the ATF tells us that it is the receiver is the lower part of the weapon that provides housing for the trigger mechanism and hammer. Now, there's a couple of other firearms that are rather unique, and I want to also bring those up. One of them is the Ruger Mark IV pistol. The diagram here shows us what ATF is considering to be the frame on that, and it says the frame is the upper part of the weapon that provides housing for the bolt or breech block. And then another one I want you to be aware of is Benelli shotguns. Fantastic products, fantastic products. The ATF has this diagram about Benelli shotguns, and they, we are told there that the receiver is the lower part of the weapon that provides housing for the trigger mechanism. So that should hopefully give you at least an idea of what these new rules mean, what they constitute, and how does it affect you, the lawful and responsible gun owner. Now, if you want to check this out, we'll put a link for all of this stuff down below. You can go to the Code of Federal Regulations yourself. Uh, these new rules start at page 24,652, so you can just thumb on through until you get there. Listen, in the meantime, you may have more questions about this new rule or anything else related to your Second Amendment rights, and if you do, don't 
don't ever hesitate to contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com or, of course, you can call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now, let's remember, part of being a lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.